So today I'm going to photograph the sun using my Celestron Astro Master LT60AC telescope. And of course, not without a solar filter. So I just recently got this adjustable 60 to 90 millimeters battery solar filter from Shopee. And it already allows me to look and photograph the sun's surface, which is the photosphere, for long periods of time without any risk whatsoever. So this thing here is what's called a solar film. And it blocks out most of the light and heat coming from the sun, allowing you to see the sun's disk very clearly and safely for long periods of time. So these screws here are what will allow me to attach this solar filter onto my telescope right here. And all that I have to do is to screw this solar filter onto my telescope. So this telescope is now ready to look at the sun. Unlike viewing the planets, viewing things like the sun, you don't need to have a lot of magnification or focal length just to get a detailed view of the sun itself because the sun is about the same size as the moon through a telescope. So you don't need to have a lot of magnification just to see the details of the surface. Of course, with just a solar filter like this, I will only be able to look at the sun's photosphere, not at the chromosphere. Which if you can see the chromosphere, you can also see things like solar prominences. The reason why it's not easy easy to look at the chromosphere is because the photosphere itself is the layer of the sun that's the brightest, that it obscures the chromosphere. That's why you need to have specialized equipment just to see it. But not as a NASA level equipment. You can buy it from telescope stores or wherever. Although it'll be a lot more expensive. But as for this solar filter, you can only see the photosphere. But with that, you can already see these things like sunspots. So it will still be worth it. So what I'll be doing to photograph the sun is to mount my phone here on this Celestion 20mm eyepiece using my universal digiscoping smartphone adapter and take pictures of the sun by using a Bluetooth device so that I don't have to touch my phone to avoid vibrations. Like what I did in my last vlog. I'm still waiting for the sky itself to clear out and hopefully it will not rain. right now because it's a comfortable place that I can be in when viewing the sun and my telescope here is already pointed at the sun right now with the solar filter attached and with my universal digiscopic smartphone adapter here as well but even though I'm in a comfortable place I have this electric fan here so that I won't sweat all over the place because still it is a hot sunny day and I can still feel the heat I can't believe the amount of detail that I am actually seeing on the sun right now and these dark spots on the surface of the sun are sunspots, which perfectly coincides with real-time images of the sun from NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory. Incredible. Incredible. Looking at the sunspot is ominous because it reminds me of how powerful the sun can be. Back in, in the year 1859, there was this event called the Carrington event in which there was a massive solar storm called a coronal mass ejection that struck our planet and caused telegraph operators to become electrocuted and electric wires bursted into flames. All telegraph systems all across North America and, e and Europe failed and the aurora display was seen as far south as the Caribbean. And if a Carrington level solar storm happened right now, it'll literally grind our society to a halt. And before the coronal mass ejection happened, astronomers observed many sunspots on the surface of the sun. And I'm looking at one right now. It's just ominous to see these sunspots on the surface of the sun. Because it indicates solar activity in the sun itself as our sun approaches solar maximum in the year 2025. And as of now, we are currently in what scientists call the solar cycle 25. So I'm now going to start taking pictures of the sun using my Bluetooth device here so that I don't have to touch my phone. So in case you might wonder why the sun itself is white instead of being yellow, because the true color of the sun is actually white, not yellow. We only see it as yellow here on Earth 
because of Earth's atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere scatters the different colors of the visible spectrum that is emitted by the sun. Some colors like orange and yellow are sparsely scattered by our Earth's atmosphere, which is why we see the sun as yellow. And the reason why the sky is blue, in case you might wonder, is because the color blue from the sun's light, which is what makes up white light, is scattered more efficiently, which is why the sky is blue.